Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the Evo N. Today I'll be talking about optimizing a recording. The usual way to optimize a recording is to compensate the differences in distance between the different microphones by applying delay. This method works well, but it's flawed, as it changes the acoustic information of the space in which the recording has been made. Another approach would be to manipulate the phase and not the time. I have here a multi-track drum kit consisting of two kick mics, one on the beta head, one on the resonant head, the same setup on the snare, one on the beta side and one on the snares, and finally a pair of overheads. So, I'll begin by realigning my overheads with the snare. So I'm switching to mono, I'm going to solo my left overhead and my snare top. Now I'll open the Evo in on the left overhead and I shall try to optimize the summation of these two signals. So, I'll change the phase of the left overhead, looking for the place where I can gain the most, in terms of spectral content. I'm looking for the place, for example, where I'm going to have the most low end on my snare, to salvage body and precision. So, there's a trick that I like to use. It's to look for the place at which the summation is least effective, and I know that the right result, or at least the one that I want, will be 180 degrees from there. So now, the same thing with the right overhead. The result is quite clear. We recover sound information, notably the snare resonance, that before the phase correction had all but disappeared. So switching my overheads back to stereo, we'll listen to what we've got so far. Now before the phase switch. So it's quite clear that the interaction between the snare and the overheads is far better once we've calibrated the phase. Also, we recover a lot more matter with which we can work as we go on with the rest of our mix. Now, to continue, I shall correct the phase between the top and bottom snare mics. Here, I know that on a snare, by inverting the phase on the bottom mic, I stand to gain a lot in terms of the interaction between the top and bottom mics. So I'll begin by searching at minus 180 degrees. Once again, I'm happy with this setting because we find this matter, this low mid on the snare that gives it its resonance. Now I'm going to look at the beta side of my kick with the overheads. Once again, I'll switch the overheads to mono. This is funny, we can feel that in this zone here the kick disappears completely, so I know that by going to the exact opposite end I'll find the place where the summation is maximal. And now I'll finish with the resonant side of the kick with the beta head. So let's hear what that sounds like in the mix. So, after the phase correction. And now, before the phase correction.
once again after the phase correction. And before the phase correction. So for me here the gain is really undeniable, and in fact we realise that by spending a little time on correcting the phase, we can save a lot of time on treatment of equalisation and compression. In fact, by optimising our recording, we retrieve a sound that is far richer and therefore a lot simpler to manipulate in the rest of our mix. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe to the Flux channel and we'll see each other in the next video.